What's happening here? Some your boy Loaded Lux. You know what's up when I'm rolling up. You're now tuned in to Real Fans Real Talk. Live. Me. Real Fans Real Talk.com. Where Arthur Domus tripped young and intern time for the white and black fans. Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro. What's going on, everyone? It's your boy Legend of Two Games. Repping for Real Fans Real Talk. We missed you guys last week. We know you guys were trying to tune in to see what was going on. We weren't on air, but no worries. This Thursday, March 8th, we will be back on air. New York City, make sure you're tuning in. That's Verizon Channel 44 at 8 p.m. We're going to get into a bunch of sports topics that have taken place over the last two weeks since the last time we were on air. But no worries, man, because that's why I'm here. I'm going to update you on some of the things that happened this weekend. Of course, as you can see, I got my Colts gear on as I watch the NFL Combine. I'm praying to the football guys that somehow, some way, the local kid, Saquon Barkley, doesn't actually end up with the local team and comes to my Colts. But more than likely, it won't play out that way. It, it'll be a storybook ending uh, or a storybook beginning to his NFL career if he does end up with the Giants. And I think he will end up there. But that's talk for another day. You know, it's a lot of time between now and next month's NFL draft. What I want to get into today is sending a big shout out and a big congratulations to a supporter of the show, a friend of the show, uh, someone who gave us the opportunity to interview him for the show. If you paid attention in the past, you always see the clip of Deontay Wilder. And he showed the championship medal and grit this weekend with his win over Luis Ortiz. Big shout out to you, homie. You held it down. And I was skeptical during the fight. I'm not going to lie. I thought going into the fight, you were the more powerful fighter. You were the more athletic fighter. And I thought your reach would be the determining factor in the fight. But Luis Ortiz found a way to get on the inside against you. And he took away some of your reach in that fight. But you showed us all the heart of a champion. You know, you knocked him down in the fifth round as he was gaining momentum early in the fight. Then he fought right back, had you on the ropes in the seventh round, and you found a way to put him away in the tenth round of a very close, very entertaining fight. If you didn't get to see it, definitely go watch the replay of it because it is an early candidate for fight of the year. And uh, I take my hat off to Deontay Wilder, man. I, I, I was a little skeptical with how much weight he lost for this fight. This was the lightest he had come into a fight in several years. Uh, Luis Ortiz so had, had that advantage, uh, even though Deontay had the reach advantage. But Deontay Wilder is one step closer to unifying the heavyweight division. He's 40 and 0. He is the number one heavyweight. And hopefully within the next year, year and a half, we get the fight we all have been waiting for, which is against Anthony Joshua. Uh, Anthony Joshua has a big fight coming up uh, later this month to uh, try to secure his end of, of the bargain. And he wins that fight. Potentially, these two could meet as two undefeated champions. Uh, but more importantly, like I said, again, Deontay Wilder showed us something that we always want to see in our fighters, and that's that championship grit. Understanding that you're not always going to fight with the lead. Uh, you're not always going to be able to win fights just by breezing through your opponent. Sometimes you're going to have to take a couple on the chin. You know, no pun intended. Sometimes you're going to have to fight your way off the ropes the way he did. And that's what really stood out about this fight to me. It wasn't that he won. It was how he won. On my scorecard, I thought Ortiz was up by at least one one point in the fight because I thought Ortiz had controlled most of the fight. Aside from the fifth round where Ortiz got knocked down the first time uh, and around in the first two rounds where they were kind of filling each other out, you know, you could go either way. I thought Ortiz really controlled the majority of the rounds. But again, Deontay Wilder did what any great champion uh, is supposed to do, and he found a way to win. And even though it was in his prettiest fight, he found a way to win. He found a way to knock out another opponent which is just phenomenal when you look at his, his resume. There's a guy who's 40-0, and 0, and 39 of those wins have been knockouts. You know, he hasn't even had to go the distance with the majority of his fighters. You know, the one fighter who did take him the distance was immediately knocked out in the first round the second time they fought. So Deontay Wilder is the number one heavyweight in the world. He's not pound for pound the best boxer, but he is the number one heavyweight in the world. And I'm hoping as a boxing fan that we get the opportunity to see a massive and mega fight with him and Anthony Joshua to unify the heavyweight division. All right. Let me know what you think, guys. Guys, leave comments, write in, tune into the show, send us emails. Make sure you're checking me out on Instagram, Legend of Two Games. Shout out to my man, Trip Young. Shout out to the stat, man. I know we're going to get into this topic on the show. I know we're going to talk some football. We definitely got to talk some baseball because right around the corner. But Lord knows I don't want to talk no basketball with the way my Knicks are looking right now. So with that being said, hope everyone had a great weekend. Hope your week gets off to a great start. And make sure you're tuning in this Thursday, 8 p.m., Verizon Channel 44. Real fans, real talk.
We out of here. Real fans, real talk.com. Where Arthur Domus tricked young and intern Tom for the white and black fans. Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro, Mark.